Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Uh, we're looking at some sandblasted parts here. Had a couple nice days and got some sandblasting done. Still got to clean all the dirt out of these parts. Um, this is everything I'm going to need to put those axles together. I got the knuckles cleaned up, the hubs, uh, the rear hubs. We still got to press the studs in there, uh, yokes, drive flanges, um, and everything's cleaned up. Put down a nice clean white metal and <clears throat> I'll get those cleaned up and we'll get the axles going. I have the axles over here and they are squeaky clean. I got the insides cleaned out, washed everything out, gave everything a solvent bath, cleaned the tubes out and I took some time to smooth out this knuckle surface here. I uh, just went over it with a DA sander, some 80 grit. Um, Cleaned the gasket surfaces, uh, retapped all the holes, got all the junk out, and they are ready to go. Okay, here's our 3A frame on the lift, and that also got sandblasted. We're down to clean white metal there, and um, this is a quite a remarkable frame. There's not a bit of pitting in it, and uh, it's pretty hard to find a good frame like that these days. Even that front bumper, original riveted on bumper there, is in very nice shape. Uh, the whole frame came out very nice. We'll get that in epoxy primer right away. And uh, things are coming along nice on this project. Okay, there's a shot of it all cleaned up. Got another frame down there uh, that I sandblasted at the same time. And uh, that's uh, an FJ40, a Toyota FJ40, and uh, we're sticking a 1UZ um, V8 in there, uh, the Toyota. Uh, we've got a Toyota Marine engine brand new that's going in there, and it's a long-term project for another guy. I uh, just wanted to get the frame sandblasted um, while I was doing some sandblasting on those nice days. And finally, here's a stack of wheels for that CJ3A project, and they cleaned up beautifully as well. No pitting on those. And they're sitting here by the stove warming up. Uh, caught just a little bit of rain when I was sandblasting those, and I want to make sure everything's nice and dry before we put the uh, epoxy on there. So, uh, they're, they're warming up now, and uh, we're going to get going on epoxy pretty soon. Okay, here's a shot of our um, CJ3B welder Jeep body. This is where we left off last time. We got the side panels and the wheelhouses on. And um, a while ago I told you guys I was going to try and bring out some welding videos. And a lot of guys have been asking me for them. And I think we got something kind of figured out for shooting some nice arc shots. And um, we're going to do a little practice run today. And I'm going to put it out there and I hope it comes out good. And um, you guys let me know what you think. But we're just going to do some small TIG welds on the rear body mounts. Um, just a sample to see how the camera is going to react and everything. And uh, we'll try and get these welding videos down a little bit better. But um, we're starting on them. And uh, I'm going to put one out next. And uh, like I say, let me know what you think. Okay, I'm going to get set up for that now. Okay guys, um, those weren't the greatest arc shots, but uh, I'm working on it. 
Uh, the weld didn't come out too bad. Uh, I kept bumping into the camera and stuff, so it looked like my hand was kind of shaky, but uh, I was having a hard time setting everything up. But uh, we'll come back with some better, better arc shots and um, probably better focusing and all that kind of stuff um, in, in a future video. We're just getting, uh, just getting our feet wet here and um, uh, learning the settings on the camera and stuff like that so uh, there'll be more coming but uh, this was just our first attempt to try and get something out there and see what it looks like on uh, on the YouTube so um, it's not the greatest but uh, you know we're getting there they'll, they'll get better every every time we put one out so um, this is just what I came up with this time uh, just something small to uh, to practice with but um, as we continue with the body, I'll get some uh, better camera angles and better setup and stuff like that and get you right in there so you can really see what's happening in the arc. Hey guys, I know we're all over the place today with uh, projects and stuff, but um, there has been some interest in seeing the Ingersoll forging machine working. And I just want to show you, I got the dies made. You can see I milled the groove in there, I faced off the front there. There's the upper one sitting in there. And um, when that comes down, it's going to grip our piece of half inch bar stock. And... Um, then we'll forge that head on there. And this is the bolt we're making. This is for the lane sawmill. And I gotta make them a little bit longer than this because I'm using a steel um, carriage. So they could be a little bit longer than that, and I'm making them out of half inch material. Uh, these were uh, they were handmade, so some of them were 7 16 some of them were undersized, some of them were almost a half inch. So um, we're just going to get, uh, we'll probably use some 1144 steel, good tough steel. Um, heated up, forge the head on there. And like I said, I've got to make a hundred of them. So um, I've got this thing lubed up today and, um, and working. And I can show you basically how it's going to work. Let me get the camera set up and. Uh, I'll give you a little preview. Okay, it takes quite a bit of air to run this thing. And um, when it gets filled up with air, the head comes up. I'll take this block out of here. And uh, the handle's on the other side. The first thing it does is it clamps. The head comes clamping down. Then you move the handle to the next position and it starts hammering. Uh, I don't have any stock in there or anything because I don't have anything hot to hit, but um, I'll just show you the basic the basic way it works. Uh, should be enough air in there now. That's the first part. That'll clamp your stock. And then when you move the handle more, it starts hammering. Don't have enough air yet. Got to get a little more air in there to to get it hammer it takes quite a bit so let's let that compressor catch up a little bit and we'll see if we can't get it to go there it goes so that's the basic operation so we have some hot material in there it should put that head on there I still got to make a little pocket for the head to be formed into um, and I'll do that maybe later in the day. But um, here's the operation lever right there. And like I say, um, the 
just got to get some material and then I'll put a little square recess in there or I'll add some material on there not sure how I'm going to do that yet but I'll get that done and when the hot material goes in um, this is the basic basic way it's going to work so that's the operation uh, just need to get some some material and get the forge going and heat them up one at a time while one's heating we'll forge one and we'll just keep going back and forth till we make a hundred of them okay so next time we're going to uh, rebuild with the front or the rear end I'm not sure which one uh, like I say everything's cleaned up ready to go and um, we'll get the ring and pinion set up and we'll get the axles in there and uh, hopefully we'll have our brake system by then and I want to show you guys the setup we're going to put on there um, and then we'll move on to the front and we'll get those knuckles figured out and stuff and get the right preload on the bearings uh, but that's happening next time uh, just a short video today to let you know where we're at and um, on Monday we'll, get, we'll dig right into these axles and it shouldn't take too long and I'll show you step by step how they go together and um, that's what I have for you today so uh, thanks for watching thanks for hanging in there with me and uh, we'll catch you on the next video and and, and hopefully um, we'll get an axle done next time okay so we'll uh, we'll see you early next week thanks for watching